Here's generally a guide to how the, uh, the unconference uh, uh, works. It's not too magical, and uh, I've been myself participating in uh, things like this uh, for a long time. It's, it, it, in a way, it's a form of uh, consensus building, you know, if you like that sort of touchy, feely thing. But it is actually a powerful way to uh, get a lot of minds working on uh, different subjects. So the, the general gist of it is, is that you're not bound by one group. You don't have to, you know, if you go to radiation and health, and Alex is boring you or something, you, you're, you know, you just pick up camp and move over to wherever else you want to go. Uh, you know, you're not going to offend anybody. Everyone knows that it's a little bit like speed dating. You can just go from station to station. And this is, a, this is an important thing. I don't know if you guys have uh, read some of these books on uh, ideation and creative thinking and stuff, but the big, the big realization now is that not all ideas are good. You know, it, all the kids get a blue ribbon and participation trophies and nobody, there's no such thing as a bad question. It's like, no, really there are. There's bad questions and your participation doesn't matter because you lost. It's up to you. You can keep eating or you can wander over and group in front of a particular group or whatever you'd like to do. It's, this is an open conference. I'm an education major at University of Minnesota Duluth and we take, a, one of the classes I take is educational psychology and they talk a lot about um, in that after reading several books, the kind of the gist of it is something I remember as um, I before E precipitates C's. So basically if you get information before the E stands for emotion, before there's an emotional appeal then you're not going to remember it. You're not, if you don't care about it, you'll never remember it, and your brain just isn't open to that. But unlike a lot of other subjects, um, they don't have a lot of background. Nobody knows about thorium. So the question is, do you send them a fact sheet that starts with um, the shortcomings of our existing problem, which for them, uh, they recognize Yucca Mountain as an issue. And right. they, they know how hard that issue is and what a political football is. So if you give them a little facts on that, um, and uh, maybe that is drumming up emotion on their parts, they're going, oh yes, this is the, the hard nut to crack, uh, and we haven't been able to do it. Uh, here's an idea that, uh, that changes that, or could change that. You know, two Joes off the street talking about it, but next time he hears about it, it's hopefully it's not going to be like, what is this? It's going to be more like, oh yeah, I, I know something about this. Yeah, well, especially if they go to, let's say, a governor's conference, and two or three governors go, yeah, does anybody know anything about thorium? You go, yeah, somebody else came by. You know, it's amazing exactly. how that will bring a subject to the top, and they may not have all the answers, but they'll, they'll, everybody in that room will feel like, I need to go back and look at my state and ask my energy uh, advisor or whatever, uh, what about this? You know, give me some facts. You mentioned that uh, Baroness uh, Worthington was talking about the different priorities um, of politicians. Number one being security. Uh, and I think she was referring to energy security, but I think even more than that would be job security. Um, and that's why I think if we can get the public on board with this and the public even more passionate about Yucca Mountain and them informed that there is a solution to Yucca Mountain, um, then that, that push could really, really put it over the top as, as far as making it the politician's priority. How do you prevent technology mocking? Like, how are we going to set up a regulatory structure that is friendly to thorium, More friendly mice. to economic development, without, right. you know, 30 years Don't from now? Don't need Without 30 years from now, our genera my generation sitting down complaining about, oh, we got locked into Lifter, and it has a few of these shortcomings, but we were never able to improve on them because of the regulatory structure. You know, and that's something that I'm like, you know, I really want to work on Lifter, I really want to work on thorium technology, but how, how, how do I do it in a way that, you know, our regulators aren't going to come in and say, okay, well, you can do Lifter, but you have to do it with live. You have to do it with this, this molten salt. You can't, I don't know, try out liquid sodium or try out anything else that might be better and might actually improve the technology, you know? Well, I think one reason that Lifter is coming on now is that we've had experience which uh, I was speaking uh, to uh, Reed Tanaka last night, and he was saying, you know, in my opinion, I think that, that people felt at the time that the, that the light water reactor was the cheapest, best, quickest way to go. And they wanted to do it, and the reason they wanted to do it... You can call this answer, I just oh. want to get your comments. Uh, oh, sure. In the audio. <laughs> 
So, so. Or do you just come into your lapel over? Okay. So the, so, sure, sure. so the, essentially the, the solid fuel reactor that we, we now are having a lot of trouble with because we've had a lot of experience with it. At the time, uh, nobody had done this and this is, this is a bunch of good things so they did it. And, uh, it it's, uh, and it has certain advantages I think uh, for people in the Cold War mentality and for what they consider to be a dangerous situation. Uh, and that's not the case anymore. So now we, we're seeing the shortcomings and we're also seeing some great answers that uh, were there perhaps all along, but now become you know, very clear uh, as to the answers that we should be following. So we need to have experience with this, and if there are shortcomings, I think that people would be ready to move faster to change it out to. I think one of the challenges, uh, one of the challenges though that you have is that 50 years ago people trusted the government. Hmm. Yes. And they don't. I mean, now now we're talking about a cynical public. Now you come up with some, it can be the greatest idea in the world, and and if the government is in any way connected, and and the government has to be connected because we have regulations. I mean, this is what you're talking about. You have to have some sort of regulatory system, but then. 50 years ago, people would say, this is a great idea, and people would say, oh, okay, our government says this is a great idea, let's go for it. Well, but now we don't have that. It's a completely different situation. You have a, you have a system where you have people who are cynical of the government as well as of private industry. So, so no matter where the idea comes from, it's just the man trying to push him down, and it's like... Yeah, how do you how do you overcome that? Progress in things like SpaceX, they've made a big change in what was once a hundred percent government-run uh, operation, and we're seeing that the public sees that. Uh, the, the NASA is not going away, so there's a joint effort, and I think that joint effort is something that the public starts to say, this is the way I want it to work, okay? I want business, I want uh, government to work together. Um, maybe I trust them better because there's a little checks and balances in there. So I think there are places that uh, maybe we, we, we will see in the Thorium economy uh, as it goes forward that uh, uh, teaming arrangement, at least we hope that, that see, and the public will, will uh, approve of that. How, how can we uh, open up those communication lines more with, with what the public wants and expects from the government and what, what the government can deliver? For me, I think it's education at all levels. We talked about on the board educating uh, uh, candidates and, and people in political office, but I think there's also uh, the general public um, making them aware of what's possible and, uh, and get them interested in the, the sciences at the lower ages and say, yes, I want to be working on something that can power the world in the future. I think fusion did that. People really embrace fusion quite a bit. Um, but obviously we've had trouble, we've put a lot of time and effort into that, and it's still not quite there, and uh, it kind of loses its luster after a while. I think Forum can come in, fill that gap, and, and be an educational point for uh, students and, and kids to get excited about, as well as the public. Well, I, I guess I, I tend to think, too, when you talk about this political thing, that it's important to come up with sort of a unified strategy from this organization to say, well, here are some ways that we're gonna do this. As, I mean, I don't know if maybe it exists, but I haven't seen that come out of any of this stuff, and I'm, I'm fairly new to this whole thing. But it seems like, like when you're talking about these fact sheets, here's a fact sheet for school. Here's a fact sheet for politicians. Here's a fact sheet for uh, environmental groups. You know, those kind of things that are targeted to those kind of things. So that somebody, somebody's doing something that's going to tackle some of these ideas. Uh, so that's like, after, I, I mean, I was going to be a music teacher. I had my, my heart set on it. Uh, that's what I went to school for, music, music education. And about a year ago, when I heard about Thorium, uh, and I just thought to myself, okay, m music, it's great, I love it, but it's, it's just insignificant to the challenges that the human race is failing and, or is, is experiencing and what I can, I can possibly do to, to change that. So instead, instead of uh, continuing my, well I did, I, you know, getting my degree anyway, but instead of doing that, now I aspire 
to uh, being a politician. I volunteered for the Terrell Clark campaign, which is taking on uh, Republican Congressman Chip Gravack. And, uh, and I've already told her and her campaign people about Thorium. They're, they're definitely interested. So with that, working with that, I'm hoping I, I can eventually run for office and, and be that guy who, who beats this thing to da beats it into their heads until you know they, they don't have a choice but to uh, follow through with this and pass some legislation that's pro thorium. And we do have people who are using their talents in various ways, but we do need people who are gonna say, you know what, I'm gonna run for office based on this. And when I'm in there, it's, it's what I'm gonna do. Yeah, well, that's, that's one of the questions I always have. It's like, when we talk nuclear, when we talk thorium, we're always talking on the federal level because we have the NRC and that seems to be this like top-down style. But like, what could we do on the state and local level? What can we, can I write to my state congressman and go, hey, I really like this. How, like, what kind of influence do they have there? What, like, could a state say, look, NRC, we're really not going to follow your rules or is that just... I mean, suicide. <laughs> Actually, heard from uh, Jim Kennedy today. I just asked him, and he said two states can get together and uh, they they can make their own rules as far as thorium regulation is concerned. So that might be an avenue to you know get those first well, lifters I mean, on the ground. Even if it's in, unsuccessful, even if say the the feds come in and shut them down, at least it gets somebody talking about it. Yeah. You know, I mean, I think a lot of these issues. You know, you you look back where those big sweeping changes in society occurred, it was kind of the states stepped out first and either in the wrong direction or in the right di direction, like uh, integration of schools where, you know, the, we had to send the National Guard down to, to make sure that, that um, African-American students could get on campus. You know, that was, that was a state taking a step in the wrong direction. Could we do the same thing where a, tr a state takes a step in the right direction? You know, I, I don't know, but if you want to put that down. I want to think right we have uh, state, okay, state, <laughs> local level rather than a national right. energy policy or uh, yeah, federal. Because I mean, it's just easier for the average citizen to get some some ear time from their state governor rather than from you know maybe their their you know federal well, representative. Think about. I mean, you look at what state has the most to gain, and I thought that Wyoming talk was great. I mean, there's one there. Maybe Hawaii. They have huge you know problem with power there. Oh, they're like, what? they're what, like 75% oil to, to make their electricity? I yeah, mean. Think of uh, Nevada and Utah and, and a lot of those states that have serious problems uh, bringing in enough water and they have just these huge water shortages. And and at the same time, you could you can solve their, their energy problems and their, and their water problems. It really seems like it would just make sense to state to state government to, to figure this out. Those states are the ones that in many cases have like oil, uh, shale, shale oil, for example, which would take incredible amounts of water to actually process, to actually uh, get that, that energy out. And so the idea of doing that when you would have something uh, such as a, a lifter type uh, technology, it, you know, it would be ridiculous. Go after that. Not to mention the environmental destruction, uh, which is one of the things that which, you know is very iffy about oil sands. I mean, one reason I think that that is that's that's thought of with no problems is it is happening somewhere far, far away, but it uses massive amounts of water and it rips up a lot of electricity and pollutes it as well in the, in the getting up the, that energy out. And so, will how will a lifter help to help to stop or to mitigate that kind of uh, environmental destruction. That could be, I think, a big selling point if they are absolutely determined to, con to continue on with the oil sand project. Maybe we could piggyback on the rare earth elements, though, because those are things that got to come out of the ground. you got to have thorium coming out with them. you got to figure out a way to mitigate the thorium. And like they're talking about the thorium bank going on with rare earth elements, maybe that's a good, a good, a good matchup. Well, and also, oil is, is, is absolutely basic to uh, our, our way of life as far as plastics and so many materials that, you know, you look around in this room and you say, just keep it's it rolling, all right from oil. Just here. keep it rolling. And you take way. out an awful lot of it. Sure. It's huge. So, yeah. it can be used for those processes and will be. It's not going to go away. That's
Yeah, I, I, I've heard several times that like hydrocarbons are so valuable chemically, like for all the cool things you can make out of them, it's such a waste to put it in your in your gas tank and burn it. Yeah. Uh, you know, Absolutely. and so so what kind of products would if we could you know somehow make portable fuels accessible without using petroleum, you know, through through this this technology, you know, you want to talk about, you know, I, I don't like the term energy independence. I like I like the idea that we're just increasing the energy supply. I, abundance. I don't, I, 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 abundance and diversity. I don't care where it's coming from or who's making it as long as it's you know, people from all over the world and all over the place, and I'm happy to make it here. I, I'd like to see more in, in, in manufacturing and other industrial processes done here in America. And I think if you make energy cheap enough, it will happen. You know, there's no reason to ship stuff all the way overseas if you can save that money on, on your electrical That's and overhead good costs. Point I'm gonna write down is the diversity of energy sources, uh, just like there's a diversity of thorium processes uh, and uses that we've, we've all talked about and that uh, you know that's what we're looking for and let the marketplace and, and the actual technology prove itself and, and uh, one will probably be a little more than the other but uh, we're certainly not going to lose uh, solar or wind uh, in the long run. There, there are places where that makes great sense uh, and uh, you know it's a combination of everything that the diversity of it that makes the, uh, the whole thing, the whole process uh, productive. You know, you want that big tent, and you also got to find people to uh, collaborate with who have your kind of shared interests. So that's important too, I think, to not make enemies of everybody, not to yeah. say, yeah. damn those people, but try to figure out a way to shut, shut down everybody and, and only do thorium. I think right. is a little bit premature. Yeah. Even for thorium, well, and may and maybe that's something that you know some people would say makes us weak because. You know, we look at the big picture and we're like, look, lifter doesn't work everywhere. Um, other molten salt reactors don't work everywhere. There are places where it makes sense to have a windmill or to have solar power provide things. You know, if, if you want to go off grid, you know, and you, you don't want all, uh, you know, continuous power supply in a residential sector, you can, you can probably do it with a lot of investment with, uh, with some renewables. But for the most part, you know, you have to remember the residential sector steals a lot of energy from the industrial sector. I mean, all of our manufactured products go to the go come from the industrial sector, and that's energy that they get tacked on. So I think there's this kind of grid logic of fallacy that a lot of uh, you know renewable promoters come in. And they'll say, "Oh well, we can do it on the residential sector, so of course we can do it." On all, all across the country, and that's just not true. I was going to say, we're going to bring the, the one political person in the group. <laughs> <laughs>